All right, hey guys, Jason here, Samco Workshop. Today we're talking about probably the hardest decision that there is in the truck industry today. This is the toughest call is between these two vehicles here. So we're going to break them down for you. You're going to see a bunch of clips of them, pictures of them going throughout. But we want to talk about these two right here. We got the ZR2. Colorado ZR2. Canyon could fit into this as well too with the AT4X, but the problem is that one jumps the price up even more, but it is very similar. So the AT4X fits right in line with this ZR2, same exact thing. Uh, and then we got the Ranger Raptor. Okay, that Ranger Raptor. This uh these are this Raptor is officially out now. We can see it, we know it. Um I haven't there has not been I check every day. But all the dealers within an hour of me, and there is no Ford Ranger around yet. And everybody keeps telling me there's coming, they're coming. I have not seen one to be able to review. When there is one out, I will jump on it. But uh, they're just they're they're like a unicorn in in Georgia right now. I just can't find one. Um, but uh, when we can, I will. Um, and uh, the ZR2, like I said, I know is amazing. I had that on order and canceled it when I got my Gladiator. But it, these two trucks are amazing. But how are they different? Okay, we know the stats. I have them listed here for you. We'll break them down. But then we're going to talk about who this, who each truck is for. Who's going to benefit from what? Uh, what the, you know, what the pros and cons of each of these are. So um, we know that the ZR2 motor-wise, it's a 2.7 inline four turbocharged with an eight-speed trans. Um, and the motor in the Raptor is that amazing that three-liter V6 twin turbo. Garrett turbos on it. <coughs> motor is incredible. Both motors are very, very good. Okay, they're both great. I would say longevity-wise that this Raptor motor is going to probably live longer. But realistically, both of them are going to do the same thing and they're both going to live about, you know, they're going to both require some sort of maintenance as every single turbo motor will. When you be in, around, or in that neighborhood of 100 to 150,000 miles, you're going to have to dump some money into it. It is a gas-powered turbo motor. There's really no two ways about it, especially in a truck format. But I would give the nod to the Raptor for a probably a more longevity type motor motor in in this in environment i'm going to say that raptor is going to win there <clears throat> we're putting out horsepower though wise we're putting out 310 430 foot pounds of torque 17 miles per gallon raptor 405 horsepower so almost you know 95 more horsepower but same torque torque is all that matters in a truck horsepower is irrelevant 100 percent. it means nothing and honestly um, from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, it seems like this one pulls better down low than this one does, making this one even feel like it's they're about equal. So don't let that to be too much of a concern. But you notice they're both 430 horse or 430 torque, 17 mpgs. So it's a wash right there. Okay. And now again, we're giving a little bit of a nod here to this one for the motor um, that you're getting in it for sure. But power wise and delivery, they're about the same. And if you have no intentions of keeping this thing for 200,000 miles, I don't think this matters one bit any way you cut it. Um, towing capability, this one's going to get a nod here because it's going to tow 6,000 pounds. It's got 1,280 pound, uh, payload capacity here. We're down 500 pounds there. And, uh, but we are up payload wise, 200 pounds. See what I'm saying? Notice it's a wash. Everything is washing out. Ground clearance, identical. We got 10.7 inches here. We got 10.7 inches here. Approach angle, a little bit better here on the ZR2, but departure angle, a little bit better here on the Ranger. A wash. Okay, weight. Now, the weight is a difference here. This one's only 49.50. This is 5325. So you're you're basically 425 pounds heavier on that Raptor. That can be a factor. That's a big number. 450 pounds is a real big number of weight. <clears throat> Something to keep in mind. Both come with 33 inch tires and they are both on 17 inch wheels. Okay, so we know that automatically. Again, a wash all the way across. Front and rear lockers on that. Front and rear lockers on here. Four auto mode going to be on the Raptor. Four auto mode is on the uh, Colorado LED headlights. I don't care about tail lights and crap like that's irrelevant. I'm not driving backwards when using those to see anything. I want I want LED headlights. We got them. I want LED headlights. We got them. Keyless push buttons, keyless entry and push button start. You guys that know me know that that's a big deal for me and for my wife. I won't. I don't want to own a vehicle that doesn't have it. CR2 has it. Raptor Ranger also has it. Win win there all over. We got Multimatic DSSV shocks. They're amazing. <clears throat> on the ZR2, I give the nod to the Fox 2.5 because they are live valve, live action, and they work, and they are changing with the environment. However, that also adds a lot more complexity and cost to those shocks um, on there, making them more expensive, and uh, you got electronics connected to them, and uh, valves and things like that that are there that I'm not sure in certain in the environments I'm in where you're co constantly covered in mud and going through water crossings like crazy and all that this could may maybe a point of failure quicker than what the DSSVs are 
Again, everything is a little bit of a trade-off. Uh, so in my opinion, I would actually personally rather have these shocks uh, for the simplicity of them than I would these. But that's for what I do. If you're a desert runner or you're you know, looking for high-speed bump compliance and stuff, these might win for you. Um, some of the things, and then when we, we kind of, you know, that's, that's our comparison line here. <coughs> where basically, these two trucks are identical. They are spitting image identicals. Ford versus Chevy. Chevy versus Ford. Same exact truck. Same exact capability. Same exact everything. Um, now, we do have, before you get into some of that, we do notice that the price is different. Okay, on the ZR2, it can be had for $50,000 and even under. Under is not that hard to do. So, But we're going to leave it at fifty. dollars But realistically, it could even be $47,000 for one of these. Um, and no ADMs. I haven't seen a dealer marking up ADMs on a ZR2. Bison Editions, yes. But the ZR2, I'm not seeing ADMs right now. This is your basically start price on the Raptor. And there are going to be a ton of ADMs from dealers on here. Ford is notorious for that. They do it all the time. So you're probably going to have ADM stands for additional dealer markup or MA, market adjustment. These are fees that the dealer is kicking on because it's not a very popular vehicle and there's not a lot of them out there. So they're going to charge you 5, 10, 12, 15, 20 grand more for it. Um, but that's ADMs. And a lot of de dealers are going to do that here. So there is a pretty significant cost difference that if I were to ballpark it, I'm going to say that it's going to be about a 10 grand difference between these two. You're looking at about $10,000. That is significant. That is very, very significant. Um, but it is, you know, something to think about. Resale value-wise, uh, on both of them here, they're, you're about equal. This one's going to hold its value very good. It is a ZR2. They always do. The Raptor Ranger is going to hold its value very good. It's a Raptor. It's going to hold it. So these are kind of a wash throughout, too. So they're the same there. <coughs> so you keep that in mind. Now, the ZR2 is going to come with actual rock rails on there. So it's going to be body side protection. The uh, You're going to get side steps on the Ranger. Uh, on the Ranger Raptor, but they're a very good quality sidestep, and they're high, and they're not intrusive, they're not in the way, they're going to give a little bit of protection in the body for light hits, they're a very good setup, again, kind of calling it a wash, because these rock rails here are not rated to lift the weight of the vehicle, things like that, so I mean, you're again, you're pretty much a wash across the board there, single exhaust on the side, dumped it, or tucked in there pretty nice, so it's not going to get hurt, dual exhaust down here and a lot of people are like oh those exhaust pipes sticking out of the back of the ranger they're going to get ripped off when you go down a hill if you look closely they are not and i will show you an inside those exhausts ford protected them okay those are protected same with where they put the uh you know they put the uh wiring connections for the uh for the trailer hitch you got your four-way and your seven-way and they are mounted down below on there and people are worried about those getting ripped off too there are two gussets that are welded in on that ranger's rear bumper that are designed to hit rock and hit things before you damage your exhaust or you damage that plate on there so uh that's pretty important to know but that does also knock away because i don't think those are taken into consideration with the departure angle but Again, they're so close. Even if you lost that inch and a half, they're so close. It's a wash. You know, it doesn't make any difference. So that, that's kind of a wash there, kind of a wash there. But they are protected. And I think they are super sexy on a Ranger. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we know that you can fit 35s on the uh, ZR2 very easily without much, much muss and fuss. We don't know that yet. I've not seen that happen with the Raptor because it's not been out long enough and not enough people have them to prove that that can be done yet. Um, we will see, but very likely, possibly, you can. Um, so we'll see, but they already got a 33 stuffed in there and there's not as much room on that Ranger as there we're seeing on the Colorado. But if we can, 35s would be great. Me personally, if I owned either one of these, I personally, I would put 34 34 inch mud tires on it and call it good um, or an aggressive uh, a hybrid RT type tire on there is what I would put on there and uh, I'd do it in a size 34 and I wouldn't have to even change my rims. I don't have to modify them, my wheel wells. I don't have to do anything. It's just a plug and play set it and go. So that's what I would personally do on either one of these. <clears throat> the back seat area of the ZR2, it wins hands down. Ford interior is nice in the inside on the Raptor. They got a lot of bolstering on the seats. They got a lot of nice features in there. Um, but I am not a fan of the back seat area on the Ranger, not one bit. They don't even give you a 60-40 split seat. Um, the back doesn't fold. It folds kind of flat, but there's nothing back there for protection. Anything. The whole back seat on the Ranger is kind of afterthought, in my opinion, and not cared about. Way more storage in the, the ZR2 than you're going to get in the Raptor. Um, there's a lot of advantages on the interior and the back seat area. 
area of the ZR2 over the Raptor, in my opinion, um, and that's important to me. I always carry a lot of gear that I got to stow, and I got a lot of stuff to fit back there, and the layout matters to me tremendously. And I always have my back seat stuffed full of gear, <clears throat> and I have all the easy access stuff not easy access. I have all the important quick that I need to get off and stuff on my little 40% split part on my Gladiator so I don't have to move everything off my seat. I can open the little 40 side and get everything I really need there and all the other stuff is under the other one. In that Ranger you can't do that. To lift the seat in a Ranger I have to take everything off the seat to lift it to get underneath of it to the storage. Where in the ZR2 you can set your common stuff under the 40 side just push everything to the other side of the seat and open a little one and then you also have your other side which you can push all your stuff to the other side and open that one beautiful but no on the ranger you got to carry everything out my backpacks my waters my power aids my gear that's sitting on there my camera equipment all my extra battery all my stuff i gotta pull it all out and set it on the ground to open a back seat pisses me off i don't like that feature so that one this one wins hands down in a back seat department as far as i'm concerned um and you also get real locker buttons dedicated locker buttons and a lot of people don't care about it being real buttons or them being in the menu um but it's one more it's 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 another step you got to go through and i also when i'm covered when i'm in, outside i'm doing that stuff and i'm there my hands are muddy a lot even if i'm wiping them off which i do all the time I don't want to be touching my touch screen and all that stuff and scratching that with dirt all over my hands to go in and out of lockers. Um, and uh, I, I don't I don't care for that. Well, they give you a dedicated real hard button in here, which is a nice feature. And it's a button that I can also touch when I have my gloves on, too, which is nice. Uh, to be able to access the locker without having to go into the touch screen. Is it petty? Yes, but it is something to keep in mind. We actually have dedicated lockers where I can be driving and say, oh, God, it's getting ugly, and then I can just let off the gas and touch that locker and, and I've got extra power and I'm gone. Okay, it's easy peasy. And the Ford, no, I got to hit a button down here. It's going to pop up a screen menu. And then on that menu, I got to hit the locker button on the menu. I don't, I don't like that too much. It bugs me. But on the flip side, the ZR2 headlight button is in that infotainment center as a soft uh, touch button, not on the actual anywhere on your gauge layout or on your uh, column or any of your configurated hard buttons. So again, everything's got a little bit of a trade-off to it. Uh, but that stuff here, you know, the locker button, the better back seat, uh, you know, that, that, that's a big factor for me. I like those. Uh, they are US made, USA made. This one is made in USA. This one is also made in USA. This is not Mexico or Guatemala or any of this kind of stuff. They are both right here. Uh, Raptor done in Detroit. This one done in uh, ZR2. Where is that done at? Is that uh, Missouri? I'm pretty sure it's right in Wilmington or whatever it is. It's somewhere in Missouri, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they are both made right here in the U.S., so that's a nice feature. Uh, on this side here, like I said, no lower or no locker hard buttons. Not sure on the 35s, we don't know, but like I said, both USA made. So realistically, you, you can't go wrong with either one of these. These are both fantastic as they come. These are top shelf vehicles here all the way around. So who should buy what? In my opinion, they both do everything the same. They both do everything incredible. You can't go wrong. Whether this is a perfect time to be a, I'm a Chevy guy or I'm a Ford guy, because you cannot lose with either one. If you buy the Raptor, you give up nothing. If you buy the ZR2, you give up nothing. If it were me, and this is still a very tough choice, I'd probably go ZR2 because of the fact of this $10,000 difference. With that said, if I could get a Raptor and not get ADM and knock two grand off of one somewhere, if I could make that magic happen somehow, I'd probably go with the Raptor because of the fact that that would increase my value more because the majority of them are going to be sold as ADMs and at MSRP, so that would just give me a little bump in there. But it, this would be a very, very tough call between the two of them. I do believe the ZR2 wins... Because of the cost factor. Again, because like I said, I think I could get one of these for 47 grand, where here you're 57 grand most likely, and that's in and usually a plus and a plus and a plus. So it might even put you at 60, 67k. Um, so there's you gotta take that into consideration. But if we can beat these, all this crap, and get rid of that. You're still 10k difference on these trucks, so that's where that's what makes this one shine the brightest for me. But if money's not a concern, or you can work some magic deals, 
this is probably the toughest choice that there is today in the truck market. Which one of these do you go with? They're both going to be incredible. Ford is no more reliable than what Chevy is. Chevy is no more capable than what this Raptor is. There is This is such a wash of pure perfection of two amazing trucks. There is no easy decision here. And I can't give you an answer. I can tell you that if it was me... If I'm going, if they say I'm going to buy one of these next year, I am going to research both of them. I'm going to drive both of them and see which one I like better. I already tell you personally, I like this driving position of the ZR2 better. I've been in it, and I have not been in a new Ford um, Ranger, but it's not that much different than the old Ford Ranger in, in sidewise. There's not really that much difference. I mean, they're, they're, you, you almost can't tell them apart on the road unless you really know what you're looking for. So there's, I mean, I, I love this. But it's, it's really not a whole heck of a lot different from the cockpit area and from what you're feeling driving a vehicle. Where this one here wins for me as far as the way it drives, but I can't say 100% because I haven't drove this yet. Um, but these are things to think about. You know, for me, I bet I, I would honestly, unbiasedly research the crap out of this from seat of my pants. Drive them, test them, see what I think. Then it would all come down to numbers... And what I can make number-wise, that would be the winner. I feel it would be this one would be the one that actually wins. But, man, you, never before have there been two trucks so perfectly close and so perfect at what they do as we have today right now with these two. So, tough call. Thanks for watching.